Chalmers Johnson joined me yesterday from San Diego. I began by asking him about the title of his book, Nemesis. Nemesis was the uh, ancient Greek goddess of revenge, of, uh, of uh, the punisher of hubris and arrogance in, uh, in human beings. Uh, you may recall she is the one that led Narcissus to the pond and showed him his reflection and he uh, dove in and uh, drowned. Uh, I chose the title because it seems to me that she's present in our country right now just waiting to make her, her uh, uh, to, to, to carry out her divine mission. By the subtitle, I really do mean it. This is not just hype to sell books, The Last Days of the American Republic. Uh, I'm here concerned with a very real concrete problem in political analysis, namely that the uh, political system of the United States today, uh, history tells us, is one of the most unstable combinations there is, that is, domestic democracy and foreign empire, that the choices are stark, a nation can be one or the other, a democracy or an imperialist, but it can't be both. Uh, if it sticks to imperialism, it will, like the old Roman Republic, on which so much of our uh, system was modeled, like the old Roman Republic, it will lose its democracy to a, uh, a domestic dictatorship. Spend some time in the book talking about an alternative, namely that of the British Empire after World War II, in which it made the decision to give up its empire in order to uh, keep its democracy. It became, I think, obvious to uh, the British that in order to retain their empire, they would have to become a tyranny. But nonetheless, it seems to me that the history of Britain is clear that it gave up its empire in order to remain a democracy. I believe this is something we should be discussing very hard in the United States. Chalmers Johnson, um, you connect the breakdown of constitutional government with militarism. Um, yes. Can you talk about the signs of the breakdown of constitutional government and how it links? Well, yes. Uh, militarism is to say to maintain an empire requires a very large standing army, huge expenditures on uh, uh, arms that leads to a military industrial complex, and generally speaking, a vicious cycle sets up of interests that lead to perpetual series of wars. Uh, Washington said uh, that the, uh, uh, the great enemy of, uh, of the republic is standing armies. It is a particular uh, enemy of republican liberty. What he meant by it is that because standing armies, militarism, a military establishment, military industrial complex, all draw power away from the rest of the country to Washington, including taxes, that within Washington they draw it to the presidency and they begin to create an imperial presidency who then implements the military's desire for secrecy, making uh, oversight of the government almost impossible for a member of Congress even, much less for a citizen. It's, uh, it seems to me that this is also the same warning that uh, Dwight Eisenhower gave in his famous farewell address of 1961. He was truly alarmed when he spoke of the rise of a large arms industry that was uh, beyond uh, supervision, uh, that was not uh, under effective control of the interests of the military industrial complex, a, uh, a phrase that he coined, we know from his, uh, from his writings, that he intended as a military industrial congressional complex. He was warned off from going that far. Who was he uh, warned? Comes into being. Who was he warned by? Members of Congress. And why were they Republican opposed? Men. Well, they did not. They did not want to have their want to have their oversight uh, abilities impugned. It was a heroic statement, but at the same time, and he also presided over the the fantastic growth of the military industrial complex, of the uh, lunatic oversupply of nuclear weapons. Uh, of the uh, empowering of the Air Force and things of this sort, it seems to be only at the, at the end that he realized uh, what a monster he had created. I asked him to talk about the expansion of U.S. military bases around the globe. 
according to the official count right now, it's something called the Base Structure Report, which is an unclassified Pentagon uh, uh, inventory of real property owed around the world and the cost it would take to uh, replace it. There are right now 737 American military bases on every continent uh, in well over 130 countries. In the um, southernmost prefecture of Japan, Okinawa, site of the Battle of Okinawa of 1945. This is a small island, uh, smaller than Kauai in the Hawaiian Islands, with a million three hundred thousand Okinawans. Uh, there's seven, there's 37 American military bases there. The uh, revolt against them has been endemic for 50 years. What this means is just an endless, non-stop series of sexually violent crimes, drunken brawls, hit-and-run accidents, environmental environmental pollution, noise pollution, helicopters falling out of the air from uh, Futema Marine Corps Air Base uh, and falling onto the campus of Okinawa International University, uh, one thing after another. As I began to study the network of bases around the world and the incidents that have gone with them and the military coups that have brought about regime change and governments that we approve of, I began to realize that Okinawa was not unusual, it was unfortunately typical. Invariably remember what this means. Imperialism is a form of tyranny. It never rules through consent of the governed. Uh, it doesn't ask for the consent of the governed. It is, we talk about the spread of democracy, but we're talking about the spread of democracy at the point of an assault rifle. Uh, that's a contradiction in terms. It doesn't work. Any self-respecting person uh, being democratized in this manner starts thinking of retaliation. Uh, nemesis becomes appropriate. Thomas Johnson, there have been major protests against U.S. military bases. Uh, recently in Vicenza in Italy, about 100,000 people protested. Uh, Ecuador announced that it would close the Manta air base, the military base there. Um, what about the response, the resistance to this uh, web of bases around the world? Well, there is a genuine resistance and has been for a long time. As I say, in the case of Okinawa, there's been uh, at least three different historical revolts against the American presence. This is true of what's going on in Italy right now, where there is tremendous resistance to uh, the CIA rendition cases, that is, kidnapping people that we've identified and flying them secretly to uh, countries where we know they will be tortured. We've, uh, we see the resistance in the form of uh, Prime Minister Zapatero in Spain, that uh, he promised the people that after he came to power, he would uh, get out of Iraq, and he was one of the few who did deliver, who does remember that uh, de if democracy means anything, it means that public opinion matters. Uh, and it continues around the world. There is a uh, growing irritation at the American colossus athwart the world, uh, using its military muscle to uh, do as it pleases. Uh, we see it right now. The people of the Persian Gulf are not being asked whether or not they want anywhere between two and four huge carrier task forces in the uh, Persian Gulf, uh, and all of which looks like preparation for an assault on, uh, on Iran. Uh, we don't know that for certain by any better means, but uh, there's plenty enough to make us uh, suspicious. Uh, and the, the cases are ubiquitous in Latin America, in, uh, 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 in Africa today. Uh, then we, we chose Iraq as a uh, as the second most uh, uh, oil-rich country on earth. One of the reasons we had no uh, exit plan from uh, Iraq is that we didn't intend to leave. Uh, the, uh, and certainly the evidence of it is the now series of at least five very, very large, heavily reinforced, long double runways, uh, five air bases in Iraq, uh, strategically located all over the country. Uh, but we uh, continue to play these games, and they are games, and the game is properly called imperialism.